Bonjour à tous. Hello everyone and welcome to this special episode of Spotlight, 10 years after the Fukushima disaster. On March the 11th, 2011, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, one of the largest in the world, was partially destroyed by a tsunami. Many inhabitants had to leave the region in a hurry. And a race against time began to decommission and decontaminate the power plant. So where are we today? How did Japan overcome this ordeal? But also what lessons have been learned from this disaster, by Japan, but also at the international level. Our team went to Fukushima to meet experts and former evacuees. Let's watch this report made a few days ago by Laurence Alexandrovich and our team in Japan. During the tsunami, a 15-meter high wave destroyed four of the six reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant north of Tokyo. Since the catastrophe, the government and TEPCO, the operator of the site, are leading the decommissioning of the power station, which includes the decontamination, which should be completed in 30 to 40 years. The power station has six reactors, all of them shut down. Reactors five and six were spared by the wave. Reactor 4 has been emptied of its fuel. After the tsunami, the first stage was to stop the reactors and prevent new emissions of radioactivity by pouring water on the installations. Cooling the reactors was the most important thing. That's why we started with that. And then we had to take care of the fuel pools. The second stage consists of removing the fuel present in the reactor pools and will take another 10 years. Last month, the removal of about two-thirds of the spent fuel rods from accident reactors was completed using robots. The third stage involves the removal of debris, a long and delicate operation that will take place in reactors 1, 2 and 3. It has been delayed because of the COVID crisis. On the site, 4,000 to 5,000 people work daily, many without protection thanks to the effort to decontaminate the site. But this is not the case in this essential section in the Alps facility. This American innovation, specially created for Fukushima, filters contaminated water. Here the damaged reactor contains molten fuel and it has to be cooled permanently, so we pour water on it. The contaminated water that comes out is absorbed by a pump and is sent to this ALP system and the radiation is practically removed, except for the tritium, to be finally stored in tanks. Tritium is a radioactive part of the water molecule present in nature, explains this specialist, who visited Fukushima three times. Tritium does not accumulate in the human body because it has a very short um, half-life. You, you take it up and then you excrete it again, Tritium generally is the least of the problems. The treated water is then stored in a thousand tanks containing 1.24 million meter cubes of water. But these tanks will be full in 2022. Therefore, this water will have to be drained and two plans have been proposed. Releasing it into the air or discharging it into the sea. This second solution worries local fishermen and farmers who fear their products will once again gain a bad reputation and sales will suffer. The government is considering the best solution, which will be implemented in two years upon the green light from the Nuclear Safety Authority, an independent body created after the Fukushima disaster that oversees safety. Here's a water sample taken last year. I would like to show you if this instrument detects radiation. If you approach, the needle doesn't change, which means there's no radiation detectable with the instrument. According to the experts, this accident is without common measure with Chernobyl. Chernobyl, for example, has released a huge amount of plutonium and americium. They have half-lives of more than 20,000 years, so Chernobyl will be contaminated forever. Fukushima is a completely different story because Fukushima has released only tiny amounts of plutonium, very, actually negligible, you can ignore them. Uh, what Fukushima released is basically radioactive cesium. The cesium-137 has a half-life of 30 years. Since the disaster, Japan has changed its safety standards for its nuclear power plants and is now sharing its experience with the world. 
We will return to Japan in a moment, this time with the inhabitants of the region. But first of all, we welcome Christoph Zeri from the International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna. Thank you for being with us. You know the Fukushima Daiichi power plant well. The last time you went there was in 2018. We just saw this report. What remains to be done? It's still a big construction site. The most difficult part will be to remove the molten fuel, the corium or the debris fuel. It will remain the most difficult part and the one that will require the most time. IAEI Director General Rafael Grossi said he was impressed by Japan's progress during his last visit in 2020. How was the collaboration between the Japanese and international institutions? As the United Nations, we went to the field and we looked at how they work. When I say we, it's a number of IAEA experts as well as a number of international experts that we invited to do these analyses with us. And the conclusion is is that the methods and analyses are reliable. The measurements of radioactivity that are made on site are reliable, and generally, the way Japan approaches the subject is in line with what can be expected. What precisely is at stake in the coming months regarding the release of treated water? Is it dangerous? On the question of whether it's dangerous or not, all nuclear reactors are authorized to release small quantities of radioactivity into the water and into the air. All this is subject to regulatory control, so whatever the decision of the Japanese government, it will be supervised by the Japanese safety authority, because we are in Japan, which will set the limits that must be respected. What lesson has been learned from this disaster at the international level? Since then, many things have been done, starting with stress tests to re-evaluate the safety of nuclear facilities in the face of events that are unexpected and coming from outside. This is one of the lessons from Fukushima. It was a reminder that a nuclear power plant has to be safe from the inside and the outside. The EU lifted its embargo on Fukushima products in 2019. Would you be happy to eat local vegetables or fish? As you mentioned, we went to the field in 2018. We visited the site, spent several days in the Fukushima region and obviously ate products from the Fukushima region at that time. And I can tell you that the food of the Fukushima region is worth discovering. Thank you very much, Christophe Zeri. And as it happens, we went to meet the inhabitants and especially the farmers of the region back in Fukushima. They came to Okuma from all the neighboring villages. The Fukushima Daiichi power plant is located in this commune. Today, in the brand new town hall, these former evacuees are commemorating the 10 year anniversary of the disaster. In Japan, we make origami cranes to make wishes and to wish for peace. The ceremony will take place in this new district of Okuma, an area that is now accessible and where reconstruction continues despite the COVID-19 pandemic. The zones that are still out of bounds are continuing to get smaller. As of March 2011, 88,000 people were living in the evacuated areas of the Fukushima prefecture. Today, 14,000 people live in the reopened areas. When I came back to Akuma, there was really nothing, just shelters and temporary stores. But now, big buildings have been built. Everywhere here, installations measure the radioactivity in the area, which has dropped a lot in 10 years. The public is constantly informed thanks to the analysis carried out by the Fukushima Research Center. The level of radioactivity in the air is measured in real time in several parts of the city. For the other elements, samples are taken from different places, such as soil and water. The frequency of analysis ranges from once a year to once a month. Buildings have been decontaminated, polluted land has been evacuated or covered with healthy soil. Except for the site of the power plant itself, there is no more radioactivity here than in the major world capitals. The geology of Japan is by nature less radioactive than elsewhere, and Chernobyl had a great impact on Europe. Only two weeks after the disaster, Koji Kato and his family returned to Fukushima, 
80 kilometers from the plant. In love with their land, these farmers produce rice, but also serve homemade beer in their bar. Farmers in the region suffered greatly after the disaster. Consumer confidence had collapsed. 54 countries had imposed restrictions on the import of Japanese foodstuffs. And today, 70% of them have lifted them. Until last year, I had been contaminated by spraying products, which resulted in extra work because I had to be able to export safely. That was the hardest part. But we didn't detect any radioactivity for five years in a row. Now we just do some checks. After the nuclear accident, exports from the region fell dramatically. Despite difficult years, they have now doubled compared to 2010. EMI has become an ambassador for Fukushima's products, all the way to France. The reactions were very good. When I told people it was from Fukushima, in all the countries I went to, I didn't see much apprehension, and it surprised me. Living in Fukushima, like for many of the evacuees who came back, is a special emotion for Koji and Emi. I have four children, and I would be happy if they could say they are proud to be born here. Rebuilding the men and women of Fukushima in a safe environment is the challenge for the authorities in Japan. International experts are united in hailing the successes of Japan, even if there are still technical difficulties to overcome. Thank you for watching Spotlight.